These are eventful days for Poet Technologies. The company began listing on the NASDAQ capital market on March 14th, and that move follows the company's appearance at the Optical Fiber Conference, or OFC, in San Diego. The feedback for Poet's proprietary optical interposer platform and the products built from it was reportedly enthusiastic. My name is Adrian Bridge-Bassey, a content creator and consultant for Poet, as well as an investor in the company. And joining me is Vivek Rajgarhia, Poet's president and general manager, who had a lot to do with putting the company's OFC plan together. Vivek, good to see you. Hi, Adrian. Uh, great to see you as well. So uh, tell us, how, uh, how well did the conference meet your expectations for what you were hoping to achieve? So, you know, from um, expectations, objectives, there were three primary um, objectives, I would say. One is, you know, over the last uh, couple of years, we've got exposure. Uh, there's a big portion of the industry that knows us, but there's also a portion of the industry that we are not directly in touch with all the time uh, that may not know us. So to get attention and make sure we become recognized as one of the industry um, you know, companies and players where you know, there's no one is asking who is Poet, what does Poet do? So I think that objective was very well met. Um, the second portion was, as we've been saying, you know, our, we've gone through the technology development phase and now going into product and providing a products based on our technology. So to have our customers, partners actually see these products in action, that it's not about discussing about technology development, it's now about providing products and that we are ready and really at that inflection point of uh, engagements, design and revenue with our products. So that was the second objective, which was met as well, you know, uh, with certainly many um, key players, many key potential customers and so on, and partners. And the third one was uh, newer customers to get engagement, again, to show our products and discuss with them their requirements and moving that ahead, you know, subsequently uh, to get those engagements going. So these three objectives, I believe, were very uh, exceeded what I would have expected going into OFC. It was a smaller uh, conference from an attendee standpoint from what used to be a few years uh, pre-pandemic era, as, as uh, understandably. But the quality of engagements, the quality of discussions, the, the people who attended um, you know, and discussed and met with us was really meaningful. So I'm, I, I'm quite excited now about you know, following up on the things after OFC. That's that, that's fabulous. Now, the, when uh, you you know when you say or the the company says that the, the demos were met were with amazement and and there's such enthusiasm for the products, uh, maybe can you go into a little bit of detail? What does that mean? What did they see that made it feel so amazing? Made it feel like so, that you guys have, are making these advancements uh, that that are good for the industry? So so, you know, as we've described previously, um, you know, uh, optics, photonics, uh, most of it is made in, uh, in a more what we call boutique manner, you know, micro optics, alignments with active alignments, uh, putting epoxy and lenses and, and making a, 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 a sub-assembly, uh, which is done in a boutique manner. It's still very widespread. There has been talks, many companies with different technologies have been talking about photonic integration circuit and silicon photonics and so on. But there's limitations around what each of those technology uh, does in terms of integration to create a complete engine or solution. What we have been doing and pitching, uh, rightly so, uh, is that we provide a complete photonic electronic integration platform for optoelectronics. You know, it's a next generation silicon photonics where we are agnostic to the material system of the devices. We make all of them talk together, okay, in a way, in a very efficient and um, elegant manner. So for, you know, the attendees, for 
customers, partners, investors, whom, who they may, who attended and saw uh, our, our, um, our engine in action, actually saw that this um, uh, photonic integration based on the interposer was very elegant. The size of it, the level of integration, the simplicity also of how they could tell how it was put together. We had people come and we had a display with a microscope so they could actually see you know, how it looked like uh, for the different devices uh, within the interposer. It was amazing. You know, they were actually seeing some things that they thought you know, uh, may or may not be real. And now to show them that it's actually real and working and is uh, is encompassed in a real product that can be delivered or products. Yeah. That's that's great. And and the um, you know I'm going to try and say this word correctly again: semiconductorization uh, of photonics. It's uh, I think it's a a, a, a bit of yeah. a language that's coming in with the company anyway. Does yeah. that? resonate with who you spoke to and who, you, who you've been having discussions? Is that, like, is that kind of a key to Ab next generation absolutely. stuff? Absolutely, you, so you put it right. Uh, we, the best way for us to describe is semiconductor packaging technology is well understood. You know, it's, it's decades ahead of where photonics is. And what we are bringing is that similarity of the semiconductors to photonics, okay? Uh, getting out of the boutique assembly to more traditional pick and place uh, methods of integration with optical interposer. So it really drove that point home. And we did not have to say it, you know, we actually showed it. So we've also used this term seeing is believing. And in our industry is uh, very well known, there are many PowerPoint slides and vaporware that goes on, never sees the light of the day. But here, now we were showing products uh, as end pro in real products in action and things that we can engage with customers to deliver to them. Mm -hmm. And I, I can see it in your smile. I can kind of feel it in, in the pride in your voice. Uh, how, you know, how special of a moment is that for you to say, hey, this is what we've been working on. We haven't seen you guys for, for a couple of years because of COVID. And, and here you are in front of your industry and you're probably some of your old colleagues uh, to be able yeah, to show this it, advancement. It was a proud, proud moment, you know, in my, um, you know, journey through this industry, uh, there have been uh, many, many relationships built and new technologies in our field, um, people are skeptical, okay? There's a lot of promise, but many of them, as I mentioned uh, earlier, don't see the light of the day and no pun intended, but um, it happens. Here for us to do a game changer, to actually bring that technology into products, and you know, personally, as you mentioned, for me is a proud moment to be a part of this team uh, and being there and showing that, yeah, what we've been talking about is actually real, not just uh, paperware. Yeah, yeah, I think excited for everyone uh, involved in the company. Now, thinking back to September when um, Poet had some live demonstrations and conferences in China, uh, hmm. and you know, after that, there was a lot of a lot of excitement, and a lot of interest posed by the Chinese market. Do you anticipate a similar influx of interest in these coming weeks following OFC? Yeah, again, absolutely. It's already started. You know, people went back. OFC is is a um, there's a lot of endurance needed. There's a lot of, um, um, uh, you know, everyone's busy right from the morning, uh, the time the sun rises till dinners and, you know, after that. So people have gone back to their companies and to their, uh, their places. And on Monday itself, and even before that, the flurry of follow-ups, you know, uh, has started. So to your question, Adrian, if comparing it to our CIOE, I think this is a next level. CIOE was demonstrating, you know, we are there, uh, products are coming out. Here we, are, we have the products out and we have engagements now, you know, uh, customers, potential customers now have asked for samples, getting those in their hands, moving to the next step customers that we already uh, engaged with, you know, uh, we shared each other's um, status and also uh, other device partners. 
So we are an integration platform to provide an engine. We need innovative devices as well. And a lot of those innovation companies, you know, want to assess who they want to engage with. So here clearly they saw that, yeah, engaging with Poet can be very uh, meaningful and help them win, you know, business for their devices as well. So overall, uh, see a lot of uh, traction already started. And I'm very confident that we'll be turning, capitalizing, and materializing many of those into real business. Mm -hmm. So it got, leads into my next question. You know, maybe a couple of specifics on what are the next steps for Poet to maximize these opportunities coming through the door. So, um, you know, if I categorize into three segments here, one is customers that we got opportunities that opportunities opened up. Okay sampling them, putting uh, samples in the hands. Uh, other category of customers who want something more unique and the strength of our platform is we can customize uh, very easily a derivative of our platform with the building blocks that we've qualified. So discussions and finalizing those requirements with them. And third is those device partners I talked about. So, and you know, on the customer side, we had engagements with the module providers who would use engine, with the system uh, switching companies who would either use it directly or use the modules that the module providers provided. And also the cloud service providers. We also had engagements with them. We were able to show them our optical engine uh, in action and also got um, actually uh, quite, uh, quite, uh, uh, traction with uh, those level of customers as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, wonderful, you know, obviously, obviously uh, a big success for you guys. Shifting gears a bit, uh, the rest of the company obviously is doing, uh, is uh, going and, and things are uh, happening. How are, uh, speaking specifically about Superphotonic Jamin, the joint venture there, uh, how are things progressing? Uh, any kind of brief update you can give us on that? So sure, yeah, it's it's moving ahead uh, actually quite well. We are now starting to build products uh, and starting to sample from there. Uh, in China, which is in the news, um, of course, the the uh, wave of the uh, COVID has you know it's it's uh, it's flamed up there, flared up there, um, and uh, hopefully short term. But there are certain pockets, especially Shenzhen being one of them has been severely hit uh, right now, so there's, there's lockdown. The good thing, if there can be in this as a company, as Poet, we have multiple centers of excellence. So we have uh, Singapore, we have Shenzhen, we have Allentown, and we have a joint venture. Now with Shenzhen being the most impacted, there is capability that overlaps. And of course, the super photonics has a lot of the capability. Uh, taking over uh, some of the work from Shenzhen to Super Photonics to Singapore, Allentown helps us in continuing the trajectory, tra trajectory we are on and continuing to make progress even in these difficult times. So I think that has been a plus for us and having these different locations has definitely been a, a big thing you know, during these tough times. Yeah, and I think it uh, speaks to the astuteness of uh, Poet's team uh, to be able to manage through this and to put these contingencies in place uh, in anticipation that, you know, the world that we're living in, these things might be more regular yeah. than any of us might want them yeah. to be. So just to clarify, we did not put the contingent, contingency as a contingency. There were certain capabilities each one offers. You know, Singapore has its own uh, forte and uh, core uh, talent, uh, domain uh, knowledge there in semiconductors using that. Uh, Allentown has its own domain and core competency in photonic uh, uh, design and development with, you know, the Bell Labs genre and, uh, you know, talent that sprung from there. Uh, Shenzhen and China in the optical integration module system level has grown quite strong in the last uh, 10, 15 years. So we utilize those to create, uh, you know, these pillars. Uh, but at the same time, there's overlap, and it happens that it is a contingency for us to manage such type of 
um, uncertainty and unforeseen circumstances. Mm -hmm. and, and good for everyone on the team to being able to, to do that. And, and thanks so much for explaining that. Thank you all for watching. Certainly more to come from Poet in the days ahead. Thank you, Adrian. Thanks for your time.